when the Baltimore Ravens lost the AFC Championship to the Kansas City Chiefs, everyone was looking forward to this offseason and the changes that the Ravens would make to improve the team. Many of us knew with upwards of 20 free agents, most of this team would not be back, and the team and the iteration that it was was not going to be the same. In the process, the Ravens lost the physical coordinators, they lost defensive personnel, and more importantly, they lost key pieces on the offensive line. Now, we knew with the signing of Justin Matabike, there was going to be a cataclysmic effect that reverberated through the Ravens organization. And in signing the Matter BK to that $98 million contract, it left less money for the upcoming free agent class. Did you do it? Yes. What did it cost? Everything. Now, a lot of people think this was the right move. A lot of people are scratching their heads thinking you let one person overcome the sum of what the team needed. But on the other hand, we also knew we were going to need that pass rush, being that Mike McDonald was leaving, and we didn't know what was going to happen with Zach Orr as the defensive coordinator. So you have six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. But more importantly to this, I think the most disappointing aspect of the Baltimore Ravens so far in free agency has been the result of what's happened to the offensive line. What is the Ravens' plan going forward as they try to build this wall around Lamar Jackson? Now, coming into the New Year League, the Ravens knew that they were going to need help on the offensive line. There was particularly skepticism as to which moving parts they were going to bring back because we had two free agent guards and we had a tackle on the last year of its deal. Not surprisingly, John Simpson went on the greener pastures for more money, but surprisingly, the Ravens traded Morgan Moses now left us at a deficit at guard and tackle. So the overwhelming prevailing thought was, all right, we can replace John Simpson because we pretty much knew that was going to happen anyway, but we did not know we were going to have to replace our starting right tackle. But yesterday, as it may, the Ravens waiting around lost Kevin Zeit, who signed with the Detroit Lions on a one-year deal. So now the Ravens have three-fifths of their starting lineup. One, two, three, four, five on the offensive line missing and having to be replaced. We are now two days into the second week of free agency. Now, the last two days have been extremely slow. Ravens fans have been sitting, waiting on bated breath to find out what the Ravens were going to do with this offensive line. And so far, nothing. While guards and tackles are being signed left and right, there is slim pickings left. So for me, if we're going to go over what's left, I looked into possibly some of the top 100 free agents left on most publications and it came to this. Trent Brown, formerly of the New England Patriots, is widely regarded as the best offensive lineman left on the market. Now, Trent Brown has had his injury history, but he is one of the better tackles in the league. Could he come in and play right tackle for the Ravens? I don't know. The Ravens as an organization has dealt with injuries throughout, so I don't know if bringing in an injured tackle is the best solution for this prop. But when you wait till the last minute, when you wait till everybody is gone, and you're skimming through the bargain bin at Walmart, you only can get what you can get. And next up, we have Andrews Peak, formerly of the New Orleans Saints. Now, he played some guard, he played some tackle. You know, the Ravens love a player that can play multiple positions just in case. But would he fit this system? Is he right for us? If the Ravens did decide to sign him, he would possibly come in and play guard, which is his natural position in the NFL. But is that effectively doing enough? Then coming in at the tail end of what is regarded as the best offensive lineman in the free agent market, you have Donovan Smith, formerly of the Kansas City World Champion, can two-time world champion Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Smith played well enough. He did his job. He's nothing spectacular, but he's solid. And to me, more importantly, he has that championship pedigree that the Ravens need. You need players to come in that have been on the mountaintop. You need players with experience. Now, the Ravens have gotten experience going to the AFC Championship, so now they know what to expect the next time that they get there. And bringing in championship pieces that knows how to get over that hump. But Smith is clearly in decline, and that's why the Kansas City Chiefs let him go, because their offensive line was rather porous outside their center and maybe one of their guards. So them not bringing him back, could this be a telltale sign that he is not the player that he once was? And coming in at 100 on the 100 list of top free agents is guard Dalton Reisner. I previously made a video last year that the Ravens should have acquired Dalton Reisner and then signed him to a long-term deal. Once again, he is on the free agent market. And to me, he is the best guard available right now. Still not 30 years of age, I think that they could bring him in and help bring and solidify this offensive line for years to come. 
huh? And then if the Ravens wait even longer and other players get signed off the board, there is still Makai Becton from the New York Jets, formerly of the New York Jets. Becton has all of the physical tools that you would want in a tackle, but I don't think that the love for the game, nor is the dedication there. That is why the New York Jets, who have probably the worst offensive line in the NFL, let him walk. He hasn't been healthy. The effort hasn't been there, but I'm pretty sure for the right price, the Baltimore Ravens would bring him in. But I'm not trying to knock what the Ravens have done this offseason. Yes, they brought in Derrick Henry, but they have no one to block for him. A season ago, you paid Lamar Jackson, but you have no one to protect him. Ronnie Stanley is clearly in decline. We have Tyler Linderbaum, but one piece does not a puzzle make. There are still plenty of weeks to go in the offseason. Free agency is not over. We cannot eliminate a trade being made or the post-June 1st cuts. I know the Ravens have gotten lucky in the past, but we cannot continue to live on luck. We cannot continue to wait for somebody else to be discarded and be hopeful that they can come in here and make a difference. I know that most of Ravens can folk believe that defense still wins championships, but until we get acclimated to Zach Moore's system, until we bring in the right players to fit, we don't know what we're going to get defensively. So why not build up your offense that may have to carry this team throughout the beginning portion of the season until the defense can find its footing. Now, I know it's easier for defenses to kind of acclimate, come together and make plays, but we don't know what we're going to have because we don't know who we're going to have. Jadavion Clowney still out there. Kyle Van Oy. There are a myriad of components that have been left unchecked as far as the Ravens go this offseason. But to me, it's just really extremely puzzling that the Ravens let their offensive line get this far. And we've had our conversations about Andrew Voorhees and Ben Cleveland, but these are unknowns. When is it as a franchise, are we going to stop going with the unknowns? When are we going to stop betting Lamar's future on what could be, what might have been, and what may be? When are we going to go out and get surefire bets that we know can protect this quarterback? We were just in the AFC Championship game, and it seems like we have regressed some. Do you really think that Salah's ready? Do you really think from last season's performance that Fa'alele has made that jump to become a starter? I don't think that right now we can take that chance on this being true. And I know some people are going to be like, but wait a minute, we still have the NFL draft to go. Yeah, we do. But we have a lot of holes that we still need to fill. And there's still a question mark as to what the Ravens should do in the first couple rounds of the draft. I would love an offensive lineman, but I would love to have that sewn up before the draft. Therefore, we can get a weapon for Lamar like a wide receiver. But it's still crazy to me because I was looking online today, this morning, and I saw somebody's mock draft. And somebody who was very familiar with the Ravens organization and in his mock draft of all things, which truly shouldn't be a surprise to me, they had the Ravens drafting a cornerback in round one. We don't have a starting wide receiver. We don't have two starting guards. We don't have a starting right tackle, nor do we have a backup running back. But they're going to go with a cornerback that we have all pro Marlowe and we have the ascending Brandon Stevens. The Ravens go cornerback first round. And there have been other publications that have said edge, cornerback, certain things. But until the Ravens solidify this offensive line, I think the Ravens may take a step back until they address these issues. To me, it should be paramount that the Ravens get this offensive line fixed. I'm not saying that they're not trying to do it. They're not effectively out there looking and searching for answers. But how do you let it get to this? Understandably, you wanted the cap savings from Morgan Moses. But why not have his replacement already in tow? We've talked about insanity so many times, but we seem to be doing the same thing again. This is why we're stuck in a situation with Ronnie Stanley. I know a lot of you thought that we should let Ronnie Stanley go, trade him, cut him, whatever. But how could we when we don't have his replacement? Now, we trade our right tackle without effectively having a replacement on the roster. We've had enough holes to fill even before the trade happened. So now we're just adding another spot that Eric Acosta has to go out there and search for. And you would think after six years, six seasons of watching Lamar Jackson and even stating yourself that you want to do better by him, you want to surround him with what you can the Ravens have failed to do so now as of this video the Ravens haven't done much hopefully because you know Eric DaCosta watches the road pod he listens to this and by the time this video comes out or the end of the day the Ravens make a move to bring in somebody to protect Lamar because that should be priority number one I love the wide receiver position but even that takes a step back from protecting Lamar he can't throw the ball. He can't effectively win games if he is not protected. And I apologize, but this is something that I am truly passionate about because Lamar, to me, is the top priority. This defense is not. As well as the defense plays, they are not the top priority on this team. We've proven season after season with dominant defensive play without Lamar Jackson, we go nowhere. 
So why not protect him? And just to me, this is my opinion, don't get upset, but they've done a piss poor job at surrounding Lamar with that talent. Ever since Marshall Yonder left, everything has gone downhill. We've tried to bring in low-level replacements, and we've hit on some. Kevin Zeitler, he was, a, he was an upgrade. But collectively, the Ravens have not given Lamar the same energy that they've given to the defensive side of the ball. And yes, incrementally, we have made steps every season. And it culminated with an AFC championship game. But with injuries, roster turnover, and everything being so uncertain, these incremental increases are not good for Lamar's career. Are we going to be like, oh, well, you know, Lamar's only in year 10, but we're finally building up everything around him to get it right. Yes, we are spoiled as Ravens fans. Most definitely. We have a great organization that consistently wins games. But for some franchises, the name of the game is championships. And that's what we're trying to attain. And when we come on here and we speak about certain things that we think the team should do, yeah, we know we're not general managers. So we we'll be sitting here behind a camera. Uh -uh. But just in our opinion, certain things could have been handled a little bit better. Certain things should be at the forefront of your team. The NFL is a simplistically complicated game. But more important, if you break it down to its simple elements, if you're strong on the defensive line, if you're strong on the offensive line, you have a start. And couple that with starting franchise quarterback, you can go many places. But for some reason, the Ravens have forgotten that the offensive line, the offensive side of the ball, is a key portion of the game. It is one third of the game in today's NFL. It is most crucial. So hopefully this week, hopefully today, hopefully in the next couple hours, the Ravens actually go out and make some moves to get Lamar the protection he deserves, not experiments. We've experimented in the draft and it's bitten us in the butt many times. So Baltimore Ravens, let's stop making these disappointing videos and make some positive videos saying we finally did it. We finally showed that we truly believe in our quarterback and give him everything that he deserves. Because at the end of the 2024 NFL season, I want Lamar Jackson hoisting that Lamardi trophy. All right, appreciate y'all. Make sure before you go, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are almost to 3,900 subscribers. Appreciate y'all right there the goal is so close so make sure you do that hit the notification bell so you are aware when i come out with new videos trying to bring y'all some good content trying to bring you that entertainment till that next time it's your boy.